Ah, the electronics industry. It's always interesting these days to see what kinds of brands are getting paired up with what kinds of products, but a Polaroid USB Blu-ray drive was just something I couldn't ignore. At the time, I was in the market for a portable plug-in USB Blu-ray drive because my Blu-ray movie collection wasn't getting very much, shall we say, screenplay because time and again and again, I didn't want to fire up the big machine with the big screen and stuff. So I actually was watching DVDs more than I was watching Blu-rays and the Blu-rays were collecting dust. So I decided to see if there were any plug-in drives that were totally powered by USB out there for Blu-ray yet. And there were a lot of choices. But the Polaroid one really piqued my interest. So I wanted to give it a try. So off to Newegg I went to place the order, and I decided to make a video about it. Because Polaroid Blu-ray, that sounded like an interesting combination. Well, well, well. Look what's here early. Of course, I'm not all that surprised that a Newegg box gets here early. Too bad it looks like the United Package Smashers played some football with it while it was on its way over here, but eh, what are you going to do? Let's do some unboxing. This is a Polaroid Blu-ray drive, and uh, well, what am I going to open the box with? Hmm, gee, I want, oh, I know. It's just, eh. yeah, who needs box cutters anyways? All yeah, right, this thing's open here, and let's check the... Okay, Newegg, what is the deal with doing, what is the point of using packing material if you're only going to pack one side? Let me guess, there's paper bag stuff instead of uh, underneath. Cha-ching! Would you look at that? You're at that stuff, who needs it? Okay, here's a problem with Newegg in more recent years. This paper bag stuff, I mean, I understand, you know, use less peanuts and styrofoam and plastic and stuff like that, but what's the point of using packing materials if you only stuff it on one side? I mean, uh, I mean, do, you do these folks really think that nothing would actually, you know, hit the box from above while it's going through the, going through the uh, shipping system and stuff? Seriously now. Okay, enough of the box. And there it is. So here it is, this is the Polaroid external BD-ROM drive, BD-162, it's a quad-speed Blu-ray, 8-speed DVD, which is slower than the 16-speed max DVD-ROM speed out there. But I've been running into that with uh, these, these Blu-ray drives for whatever reason. Now, the Blu-ray drives actually, um, maybe it's because the, two, the way the two technologies interact with one another or something, but I've been finding that the combo Blu-ray DVD drives actually have slower DVD speeds than, um, than standalone DVD drives do. But why would I buy something like this to watch DVDs with anyways? So any, anyhow, okay, so Polaroid external BD-ROM drive, let's take a look at the box, uh, PC notebook compatible, eh, that probably means it just runs off a of USB. USB 2, that's good, it's not a USB 3 device. Um, I, do have a USB, I do have USB 3 on my desktop, but not on that piece of junk laptop. Top. So portable, probably because it only has one plug. Work with BD DVD CD. I believe there should be an S after work there. It should be works with BD DVD CD. Plug and play. Well, gee, um, it's USB. I wonder if it's plug and play. Yeah. Supports 3D playback on this little thing? What do I need three? Well, ma'am, I, I better shut up because I'm sure there are some high-end laptops out there that, that could support 3D somehow. I mean, the Nintendo 3DS is out, so specifications and contents on the side. Somebody's got a loud motorcycle outside, if you just heard that. External BD-ROM drive. Experience high-quality Blu-ray content on the go. <laughs> Yeah, experience high quality Blu-ray content on the go. Sorry, not on a little tiny laptop screen, even if it does 1080p. Little diagram there showing the, uh, showing the, yeah, <laughs> generic looking laptop with it plugged in to show how it works. We got support 3D playback, which makes you enjoy the, support 3D playback, which makes you enjoy the 3D movie. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna make fun of how this is written here. Enjoy high definition movie, music, or photo. Just one, apparently, on your notebook or desktop space computer. <laughs> smart X, smart monitoring and adjusting. Read speed technology for extraction. 
Uh, maybe it has something to do with ripping, I don't know. USB cable conveniently attaches and stores so you won't lose it. Oh, shoot. I, I, well, actually, from the pictures on Newegg, that probably means, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. I'm worried about whether this is hardwired or not. I haven't yet seen a USB device with a hardwired USB cable, but, you know, the Newegg picture did show a discrete jack, so maybe I'm just getting paranoid here. Notice, please make sure your system hardware specification, just one, meet the basic system requirement of BD Playback, WinDVD Advisor Tool and Playback Software Download. No thanks, I'll pass on WinDVD, I already have TMT. Power DVD Advisor, yeah, sure, whatever. Power, I'm, <laughs> my last experience with Power DVD was, wasn't all that great. Blah, 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 etc. And of course, it's Polaroid, a little rainbow thing going on the bottom. So let's get this thing open. And we need the half pair of scissors yet again. All right, half a pair of scissors, go! <laughs> All right, uh, got enough to get the little tab thing open? Oh, yes! Uh, is this camera, oh, good. Thought it was zoomed in here. One of the problems with this new camera is it sometimes zooms in. It's so easy to zoom this thing that it's very easy to do it accidentally. Okay, so, oh, I see. We get the best of both worlds. We get a cardboard package and a plastic blister pack. But at least, I, it, but at least this one's openable, I hope. What happens if we pull the two tabs apart? Oh, almost broke the drive. And there it is, my latest, my, the latest in my fingerprint magnet collection because it's nice and shiny and doubles as a mirror. Howdy, folks! <laughs> All right. Uh, um, does it open? Oh, no. Oh, man. <laughs> Look at this. this is a pathetic excuse for a cable. I think this is, I uh, can't even get it out. Okay, I think this needs to be broken in a bit. Where'd I throw the scissors? Okay, I'm gonna stop tossing these things off to the side when I think I'm done with them. So, first and foremost, let's get that, well, don't cut the cable, obviously, but, yeah. Okay, yeah, this must be what they meant by cable storage, because this, I'll flip it back over. This itty bitty, <laughs> a couple inches of USB. I mean, you know, I, I could go get a USB hub or something that has a cable that's that blows this one out of the water. So yeah, not to mention because it ships like that. I mean, let's straighten this thing out. That's, that's one serious bend in the cable right out of the box. Sorry, Polaroid. Yeah, you know, I know you've got that little spot to stick the tiny itty bitty cable, but I don't think I'm going to use it. There's our USB jack. Is there a little layer of plastic on top of this thing to take off? Hmm, don't see any, just my reflection. This is not a mechanical switch, so apparently this device needs to be powered up before the thing will even open. And, for those of you that thought it looked like a portable CD player, on um, the, if you look at pictures of this on the internet, it um it's not a, it's it's bigger than a portable CD player. Matter of fact, I should probably go find some old CD players to compare it size wise. It's it's the size of a portable CD player from like 1992 or something, you know. But anyways, uh, yeah, we should probably just quit, you know, circling this around, and watching the camera go out of focus through a little viewfinder, and hook this thing up. Anywho. Okay, size comparison time for the Polaroid portable Blu-ray uh, drive. I said that it looked like a CD, about the size of a portable CD player on the website, and I just got done saying it looks bigger. Yep, it is bigger. Here's the portable CD player for size comparison purposes. So as you can see, the uh, Polaroid Blu-ray drive is obviously uh, more in line with early 90s portable CD players that were big bricks instead of these little disc-ish things they had later on. But anyways. Let's get a little more circular, move up to the crossover technology between CD players and MP3 players. Portable MP3 CD players that played CDs with MP3s on them back in the day. I'm sure these are still around, but as you can see, size difference, yep. So let's leave the realm of portable devices and go to some non-portable devices for even more comparisons. To start with, the Hackjob Blu-ray drive that I built last year for my main setup, and I've modified since then to include rubber feet. Yeah, I don't know how I forgot that when I was building this earlier, but folks, never build something like this without rubber feet because it's made of metal. Metal and wood don't really go together all that well. <laughs> so, 
Anyways, yeah, so size comparison, obviously, now with the hack job drive alongside it. Finally, something bigger than the Polaroid drive. And just for giggles, our, for our last comparison, a piece of junk $30 Walmart special Blu-ray, our DVD player, from back when um, I first found out about $30 DVD players. So yeah, there we go. Size comparison purposes. Uh, I think this is a pretty hefty portable device. But enough putting stuff down alongside of it. I mean, we actually have to see this thing work. Not to mention, we already know this is not a mechanical eject switch. So uh, we gotta figure out you know, how, well, let's just continue filming. That has been the size comparison. On to something more interesting. Okay, the crap top's ready to go. Our movie of choice is going to be The Hunt for Red October on Blu-ray. And we are not going to be using this pathetic excuse for a USB cable. Instead, well, I buy USB hubs and USB stuff I either don't need the cables for or the device dies or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it takes one of these size USB plugs. So, we'll just go with this. All right, let's hook this sucker up. Uh, let's see here. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Plug it into the one jack in the back, and let's plug it into the laptop. What was that? Oh no, don't tell me this is a cheap chunk of plastic that's loud. Oh, Blu-ray in its infancy. <laughs> okay, so let's hit this eject button here, and then, yep, yeah, it's basically like a portable CD player or a slim PS2, except it doesn't actually have a mechanical open and close switch. You actually have to hope that the... <laughs> I wonder what happens if this thing uh, fries itself. You know, do you need a putty knife to just take the cheap plastic cover off and get your disc out? Yeah, build quality wise, this is kind of loose and stuff and uh, the build quality is a little on the flimsy side. My uh, hack job drive is definitely uh, more solidly built than this thing. Anyways, let's, not, let's quit griping about the build quality and let's see how it runs. Okay, Hunt for Red October on Blu-ray in three, two, one. What is this, Mythbusters? <laughs> Been watching too many uh, Mythbusters DVDs lately. Oh no, you've got to be kidding me. Listen to that whiny motor. <laughs> oh man. You know, I haven't put up with this from an optical drive in literally years. You know, not since some, I ran into some cheap drives on a cheap computer a while ago. It does look like it's playing, though. Uh, what's going on on the laptop? Okay, it does have a little bit of operating noise, so that by itself is reason to want to get a longer cable, so you can toss this off to the side somewhere where you can't hear it as much. Oh, that is so annoying, though. We're going to have to do a close-up shot of just the operating noise to give you an idea. Uh, what's going on here? It's reading the disc though. There's Paramount, which doesn't like it if its logos are shown. So let's just point the camera downward a little while it goes through the Paramount logo. So I know they're Paramount. Oh, that, that stupid wine! It's gotta be the, this is the whiniest optical drive that I've seen in years. But at least it's playing the movie. We couldn't get this running last time, so it's good to finally get this Blu-ray up and running. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mute the sound. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mute the sound. We're going to do a close-up shot, get the spider tripod back. I'm going to do a close-up of just the operating noise of this thing. It's definitely a cheap chunk of plastic. So if you want to just have Blu-ray playback and that's it, and you don't mind a little noise, maybe you should get one of these, but I'm not really impressed. Right now, about all I'm saying is, at least it plays. Okay, the laptop has been muted. I'm going to shut up, and you're going to listen to the operating noise of this Polaroid portable Blu-ray drive, just, to, just so you can get a good idea of what you'd have to deal with if you got this thing. So ready? Here we go. loading the disk. Apologies.
days if this gets a little too boring. <laughs> Those must be read-write noises. Funny how the activity light is making the camera go out of focus. <laughs> okay, it's loading the menu for the Blu-ray Blu-ray right now. It's going through the commercial stuff at the beginning, Paramount logo, etc. This is where your movie trailers would be. Let's get some operating noise while the movie's actually playing, just to give you an idea. Now it's playing a movie. So what you hear is the kind of noise you're going to hear while you're playing something on this thing. Okay, so as you can see, this is probably the whiniest drive of any sort, hard drive, optical drive, that I've seen in years. So the whine is, is obviously the biggest issue here. There's some read-write noise when it's reading and writing and other stuff like that. But um, I'd say just having this, this whine going on and on and on throughout the movie uh, really uh, means that you should probably stick to... Uh, you should probably do something else if the, uh, with your main setup and just use this for on the go or something like that. I mean, it is cheap, and I'll give it credit for that. But anyways, yeah, so let's hit stop and see how the wine goes when you eject the disc. <laughs> it's like someone's shutting it off. <laughs> what a cheap piece of junk. But at least it works. I'll give it credit for that. All right, that's enough operating noise testing. I'm sure you're all thoroughly bored by now. So let's get back to some real vlogging here. Check it out, the little button thing that you use that you know signals when the thing's closed. It's not even recessed into the unit. So let's hold it down with the pair of scissors. <laughs> yeah, Blu-ray turntable, baby. You can even see the blue you can even see the blue laser through the disc. Though I'm guessing it's not very safe to look at it. <laughs> yeah! Blu-ray turntable, baby! <laughs> Considering that these things usually have, you know, safety devices and stuff like that, so you don't accidentally look into the laser, <laughs> this really is pretty pathetic. You know, like, try and press. If you, like, press it down halfway, it starts running. I'm not going to look directly at that blue laser, even if I'm not looking directly at it. <laughs> Hope this doesn't damage my camera, either. Oh, yeah, look at that thing just dancing all around the... <laughs> well, I, I know what to do if I ever want to... Blu-ray player. It looks like a turntable <laughs> while it's operating. Oh man. I should go get the cleaning disc and see what that sounds like because I got one of those cleaning discs with two holes in it. Let me go back and get that. <laughs> Seriously, what were they thinking with this design? Take a look at the laser assembly. Check it out. Two lasers. Let me guess. One's for Blu-ray and one's for DVD. Okay, Blu-ray cleaning disc with two holes drilled in it, turntable style, in three, two, one. Come on, spin! Red? Oh, it's using the DVD laser. I get it. This isn't even a Blu-ray, it's a DVD with holes drilled in it. All right, well, at least you know the red laser works too. Okay, all things considered, I think the operating noise and especially that whine are just the deal breaker with this drive. You know, uh, I think this is probably gonna wind up being a return for me. And I don't return a lot of stuff to Newegg, but you know, there are exceptions. It looks like this is gonna be one of them. You know, I wouldn't have a problem with a cheaply built drive that made some read-write noises, but that whine is just a deal breaker. I mean. It's so annoying. I mean, maybe if you work in an environment where you hear whining drives all the time, this thing won't bother you. But for the rest of us, never mind. I think I'll pass on that. 
especially when you know I built I actually built a plug-in blu-ray drive even though it requires external power that doesn't whine and cry or anything like that just listen to that whine one last time before it goes back to Newegg Ugh, what a waste. I think this will be the last uh, the last of this type of product tryout that I do here. Okay, enough playing with this stupid thing. Polaroid Blu-ray. Better luck next time, Polaroid. Or just stick to cameras or something like that. Thanks for bearing with me on this, folks. I realize this has been a long vlog, probably my longest ever. I'm sure it's going to look like I'm out to abuse YouTube's No Limit thing or something like that. But I just wanted to exhaustively give this unit a try, because it'd be pretty funny if this turned out to be worth it. Sadly, though, it's not. Between the build quality, between the build quality, the stupid design choices made with this thing, and the, and of course, the whiny motor, this thing is just, I don't know. Maybe people who work in server rooms or something that listen to whiny drives all day long could put up with this, but not the average Joe on the street. All right, enough fiddling with gadgets for now. Until next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.